Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CAPE webinar on the 2022 annual accreditation report process. My colleague, uh, Rose Helen Graham, and I am Bonhe Bhattacharya. We, are, we would like to share some highlights of this year's report. And we will also show you the steps of completing the report using CAPE's online platform, uh, in short, AIMS, our accreditation information management system. So the, to begin with, we would like to note that the annual report is really a CAPE requirement for all EPPs seeking CAPE accreditation or continuing uh, legacy accreditation, either via <clears throat> NCAPE or TAC, to maintain the accreditation status and accreditation eligibility. Every provider seeking CAPE accreditation or holding legacy NCAPE or TAC accreditation would be required to complete the annual report. No exceptions. While writing the report, you would include um, information about your EPP's um, commitment to continue meeting accreditation standards between site visits. You would also uh, address um, remediation plans of existing stipulations and areas for improvements in case there were any from your prior accreditation decision. You would also need to include any substantive changes that might have occurred since the last annual reporting, uh, last year's annual reporting, um, either changes at the provider level, institutional level that might be impacted by changes in your regional accreditation status, um, et cetera. So all of those, it, sometimes providers reach out to CAPE staff directly via email, but annual reporting, uh, including this information um, as part of the annual report section three is actually formalizing the reporting process of sub substantive changes. Then you would include completer data from the 2020-2021 academic year, which would also be the basis of this year's um, CAPE dues for your provider. And last but not the least, uh, you will be discussing your, provide, your EPP's efforts in publicly reporting data either on your website or on any public platform that you use to share information with public about your uh, programs on completer impact and effectiveness, employer satisfaction, stakeholder in involvement, candidate competency at the time of program completion, and also ability of completers to be hired in positions for which they were prepared. Now to give you some very quick snapshots of some key dates and um, steps to, as you start thinking about your annual reporting process for 2022, Remember this year's report will ask for information or evidence or data uh, collected from the 2020-2021 academic year. That is all the evidence that you collected, that you may have collected between uh, September 1st, 2020 and August 31st, 2021 uh, would be the information that you will be sharing unless there is a specific section that is asking something else. Um, January 31st is uh, the day when CAPE releases the annual report template for all EPPs, uh, and April 30th is always the due date for submitting the annual report for this year. You can access the report um, through AIMS, because the actual report that you will be writing and submitting is through AIMS. Uh, if you go to aims.capenet.org and uh, use your uh, provider's unique ID and password, login ID and password, you will be able to get into the system. Then there is a tab that says annual report systems. 
uh, once you click that, uh, you, it will show you a highlighted, blue highlighted 2022 written on it. You click on that. Uh, once you do that, you can access the actual template, the annual report template that you will need to work on and complete, submit by uh, April 30th. Also remember that there are several sections uh, of the report, but the number of sections that you see or which sections you see for your EPP might vary this year from what it was last year or will be next year. And it all depends on um, uh, your EPP's accreditation timing and status. The, on this slide, you'll see uh, this is a, a, a screenshot from the table is a screenshot from the technical guide for the 2022 annual report. It's posted on our website, um, but we wanted to include this information over here so that you know that, okay, if I see sections one, two, three, and eight, why am I not seeing four, five, six, and seven? You can go and check with check this table to see. Okay, what's your programs? Or what is your provider status? Is it a, a CAPE applicant or CAPE eligible uh, provider? Not it hasn't gone through a CAPE review process or NCAT legacy review or TIAC legacy review. That's why maybe. Or why do you only have one, two, uh, three, four, and then eight? and not six and seven uh, or five, six and seven. Maybe you have your site visit um, either in fall of 2021 or spring of 2022, then you might see some changes in the sections, right? So tally, so keep your status in mind and then look at this table to make sure the sections are uh, matching your status. If you have any questions, of course, we are there and we will give, provide you with uh, the contact information just in case you have any questions related to the annual reporting process. But just know that your EPP, irrespective of when you are having a visit or if you have a visit in spring 2022 or for just finished your visit, doesn't matter, you need to complete an annual report. Only the number of sections might vary a little, but that's okay. Rosalind, can we go to the next one? Oh, I think uh, for, before we talk about uh, what happens uh, if an annual report is not submitted, uh, Rosalind, I think I would hand over the uh, next portion of the next section of this webinar to talk a little bit uh, about the steps and show uh, and just um, show how an EPP would be logging into the system, accessing AIMS, accessing the annual report template and uh, completing the process. So Rosalind, over to you. Thank you, Banhi. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna walk you through how to access your report in AIMS and how to fill it out for submission. So as Wanhee mentioned in our PowerPoint slide, um, you're going to be filling out your annual report via our AIMS platform. Um, you will use your EPP's unique login ID and password in order to access AIMS. Once you have logged in, um, on the left-hand side, you'll see a menu bar. You're gonna go down until you see the annual report systems. Click on that. Um, once you see the 2022 link here, you can click on that and that will open up the annual report for this year. Um, so as Banhi mentioned, um, annual reports, full annual reports will have eight sections. However, depending on your accreditation status, you may have fewer than eight sections and this will be auto-populated in your template. 
Um, so now I'm just going to go through a quick overview of how to report each section. Before I begin, though, I want to draw your attention to um, our technical guide at the top of the page right here. Um, so this is a link to our technical guide. I'm going to open it into a new tab. The technical guide is a really great resource in which we have um, written down all the steps to filling out your annual report um, section by section and gives good guidance on uh, what information CAPE is looking for, as well as um, examples that might be relevant. Um, for today, I'm going to be walking you through the steps in the actual report, um, but please do note that this technical guide is a wonderful resource to refer to um, in the event you have questions about a specific section. Section one of the annual report asks EPPs to update their profile and aims. Um, so we're asking you to please review the educator preparation providers profile and aims and update the following information for contact persons, EPP characteristics and program listings. For um, question 1.1.1, um, I need to confirm that the EPP has listed and updated the contact information for individual or individuals designated as the EPP head. So in order to do this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back into my AIMS profile. Down on the left-hand corner, I will go down to data management and then click on contact information. Here is where I have a listing of all of the um, points of contact for my EPP um, that can get received notifications from CAPE. CAPE sends out the majority of their important communications through the AIM system. Um, so it's really important that the EPP does have up-to-date contact information in this system. So right now I'm just checking to make sure that my EPP head, I have a contact for, um, that it's current and up to date, it's accurate, there's an email and a phone number, and I do. So now I can go back into my report and say, agree, I have done this. Um, going on to the next question, I need to confirm that the EPP has listed and updated the contact information for the individual designated as the CAPE coordinator. So again, I'm just going to go back into AIMS um, under contact information as well, and check that the CAPE coordinator position is also filled out. So when I check this, I'm looking for a name, a title, a phone number, and an email. And I'm noticing there is not an email currently up to date in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and add it now. When I add the email, I'm going to go down and make sure I press the save button. Now that I've saved that, I'm going to go back into the annual report and agree that I have updated this information. The next question asks me to confirm that I have provided updated contact information for two distinct people for these roles, the EPP head and the CAPE coordinator. So um, I need to go back in and make sure that I have designated two individual people as points of contact in the EPP head role and CAPE coordinator role. And so because the two people who are listed are unique individuals and it's not the same point of contact, I can confirm that yes, I have done that. Moving on to section 1.2, um, I need to update EPP information in AIMS. So in order to do this, I am going to go into AIMS, go to data management, and then click on EPP information. This will bring up the EPP information that CAPE has on file for me, and I want to confirm that it is all accurate and correct. But first, let me go in and check and see what CAPE is asking me to confirm. First, I need to confirm the basic information that the EPP's basic information, including mailing address and EPP name, are up to date and accurate in AIMS. So I'm checking the name, the mailing address, and making sure that contact information is accurate. And then I'm going to certify that it is by agreeing. Next, I need to check the EPP characteristics and affiliations and confirm that the EPP characteristics and affiliations, including Carnegie classification, 
EPP type, religious affiliation, language of instruction, and institutional accreditation and branch campuses and sites are up to date and accurately reflected in AIMS. So again, I will go back into AIMS system, review each section, um, and make sure that it is accurate. If I were to change a section, let's say that um, our EPP had a religious affiliation that was not noted, I would select the appropriate category that the EPP falls under, and then I would press save. Once I've done this, I can affirm that this information is up to date and accurate. Finally, for section one, the last thing I need to do is go into the program options and confirm that the EPP's program listings, including program names, program review level, certificate level, program category, and program review option are up to date and accurately reflected for all EPP programs that fall within CAPE scope of accreditation. If you have a program in AIMS that does not fall inside of CAPE's scope of accreditation, it can be archived and not listed in AIMS. So let me show you how that's done. Again, I'm going into AIMS. I'm going to the data management tab, and then I'm clicking on program options. Once I click on program options, it will provide me a listing of the programs that have been submitted to CAPE at, for review. I wanna check my programs one by one and make sure that they are accurate and up to date in name, level, degree, category, delivery site, review status, um, and any other information that may need to be uploaded. So as I go down, I'm noticing that my MAT in elementary ed does not have a review by status. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that now. I'm gonna click on the program listing. I'm gonna select the level of the program. So which is it um, an initial program review or is it an advanced program review? I'm going to select the program category And then I need to select a program review type. This program review type will, de will depend on what options are available to your EPP. However, this program review um, will be state. Once that is done, um, if it has any applicable delivery site options, I would select those. If not, we'll leave it blank. And then we want to press the save button. Once we've saved that information, we can press the back button and it will return us to this page so we can go through each program individually and ensure that they are up to date and accurate. Once you've done that for all of your programs, you can go back to your annual report and agree that you have updated the program listings. Section two of CAPE's annual report asks you to report how many candidates completed programs um, that prepared them to work in the P-12 setting during the prior academic year, which would have been academic year 2020 to 2021. Um, you're asked to enter a numeric value in the text box to represent the number of completers that completed in the prior year for initial programs. So again, that was 50 and then for advanced programs separately. And I entered 25. So when I do that, um, our template will sum those two numbers to give a total number of program completers. I'm going to press next to move on to the section three. Section three, CAPE asks EPPs to report any substantive changes that have occurred at the EPP institution or organization, as well as the EPP's current regional accreditation status. So in this section, you are asked to respond to the following prompts and indicate whether or not any substantive changes have occurred at your EPP or institution during the prior academic year. Again, that will be academic year 2020 to 2021. Um, question 3.1 asks, has there been any changes in the EPP's legal status, form of control or ownership? If there has been a change, you would select change, um, which brings you to a drop-down menu that gives you 600 characters to explain what change has occurred um, and you know, if there needs to be any follow up, you can explain that in um, the text box below. If there's no change, you can simply select no change and move on to the next question. 
3.2 asks, has the EPP entered into a contract with other providers for direct instructional services, including any teach out agreements? So here, if you have entered into a contract with other providers for direct instructional services or teach out agreements in the prior academic year, you can indicate that change and explain the change below, or again, select no change not applicable. Question 3.3 asks, since the last reporting cycle, has the EPP seen a change in state program approval? If you've seen a change in state program approval, please select change and indicate what the change was. If not, you can select no change not applicable. Question 3.4 asks the EPP to provide its current regional accreditation status. So you're going to type in the accrediting agency that provides your EPP its regional accreditation status for Cape University, that's the Higher Learning Commission. Then we'll type in our status, our status is accredited. We need to indicate whether or not this status represents a change from the prior year. If it represents a change, we would again select change and explain the change. And if there is no change, we will select no change not applicable. The last question in section three asks, since the last reporting cycle, does the EPP have any other substantive changes to report to CAPE per CAPE's accreditation policy? Again, you can select change if you need to report a change or no change not applicable. This section is also a great section to provide any insight on um, pending changes that may be occurring. Um, that you might want to inform CAPE about. To move on to section four, we'll click the next bottom, next, sorry, the next button at the bottom. All right, so section four of the annual report, um, which is CAPE's accreditation details on EPP's website, um, is probably the most um, time intensive section of the annual report. And um, I really do suggest reviewing pages, me, pages 16 through 20 of the annual report technical guide to make sure um, that you understand what kind of information CAPE will be looking for as they review each section of section four. Again, that's pages 16 through 20, um, which give a really great overview of the information that CAPE will be looking for, as well as examples of EPPs who um, have done so. So um, section four, we're asking EPPs to please update their public facing website to include number one, the EPP's current CAPE accreditation status with an accurate listing of the EPP's CAPE and CATER TIAC reviewed programs. And number two, the EPP's display of the CAPE accountability measures for academic year 2020 to 2021. So the first part of this section, um, the provider needs to share a direct link to its EPP's website where information relevant to the EPP's current accreditation status is provided along with an accurate list of programs including, sorry, included during the most recent CAPE and CATER TIAC accreditation review. And so the best way for me to show you an example of this is actually just to go to um, an EPP that we feature in our technical guide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this page now. Um, I am showing Idaho State University and how they have listed their CAPE accreditation and reviewed programs on their website. So below you can see they have indicated which programs were reviewed during their last NCATE 2015 visit. And they have also identified um, whether the programs were at the initial or the advanced level. Um, they've also indicated that they have added some programs since their last NCATE review. And these programs will be reviewed in their 2022 CAPE visit. Um, this is a really nice example of how to list your NCATE, um, CAPE, or TIAC reviewed programs on your website. So for this EPP, what they would do is they would simply take the URL from this page and paste it into the section 4.1 text box below. For section 4.2, CAPE accountability measures for tier requirements. Um, this section is what used to be known as the CAPE annual reporting measures. Um, however, because of the recent streamline of standards for the 2022 year, 
um, CAPE has been able to also streamline the measures um, in which EPPs need to provide data on their website. Uh, so we were able to move from eight data measures to four. For this section, we ask that providers share a direct link to their website where the EPP's display of data for their CAPE accountability measures as gathered during the 2020 to 2021 academic year are clearly tagged, explained, and available to the public. So I'm going to show you an example of an EPP who has done that. Um, please keep in mind that this example is from last year's annual report. So it will be showing the EPP's eight annual reporting measures as opposed to the four measures that um, will be asked for this year. The example I'm showing is from the University of Kansas. Um, they've done a really nice job of tagging the data to um, last year's CAPE annual reporting measures and sectioning it out by um, each measure. Underneath that, um, they provided data as well as a clear explanation of what the data are and how they are used to provide information related to each measure. So to complete section 4.2, once the EPP has this information displayed on their web page, they can simply copy the URL from the page, return to their annual report, and paste the link into the text box below. We have provided one link for the initial level measures and one link for advanced level measures. If your initial and advanced measures are on the same page, you can link the same page. Moving on to section five, we'll go ahead and press the next button. If at any time you decide that you want to stop, take a pause and come back to your report later, you can of course press the save and quit button. This will save your work in Ames and you can return to it later. Section five of the annual report um, asks EPPs to summarize any activities or outcomes of activities as they relate to correcting areas cited in their last accreditation action or decision report. Um, so this is um, just responding to any areas for improvement, weaknesses, or stipulations that the EPP may have received during their last accreditation decision. This section of the report will auto-populate um, depending on your EPP's results of the accreditation visit. And um, the same AFIs and stipulations will be present for um, until your next um, accreditation review is completed. So each year you'll just summarize um, any efforts that you have done to remediate your AFIs or stipulations. Moving on to section six, uh, we ask EPPs to report on their continuous improvement um, as well as any progress they have made on phase in plans or transition plans. So for EPPs who did not submit a phase in plan or a transition plan in their last accreditation visit, they can simply report on any continuous improvement efforts the EPP is currently working towards, um, anything they'd like to share and highlight with CAPE. If the EPP submitted a phase in plan or transition plan during their last accreditation visit, this is an area in which they can comment and provide CAPE with an update on the EPP's progress towards um, implementing those plans or any changes um, that may have come up since those plans were created. So in the first text box, um, the EPP should summarize any data-driven EPP-wide programmatic modifications, innovations, or changes planned, worked on, or completed during the last academic year. And again, this is just an opportunity to share targeted continuous improvement efforts your EPP is proud of, focusing on one or two major efforts the EPP made and the relationship among data examined changes and studying the results of those changes. There is a 10,000 character limit per response, um, but you know, to the extent that you find that you would like to provide more information, you are able to upload a document by pressing select a file and uploading a document to provide additional supporting evidence. 
And the next question asks if the provider would be willing to share highlights, new initiatives, assessments, research, scholarship, or any activities during CAPE conference or in other CAPE communication. So if you are willing to have um, your continuous improvement efforts shared publicly or um, shared at a CAPE conference, um, please select yes, and you can give us optional comments as to, you know, how you're willing to have that information shared. If you would not like to have that information shared publicly, you can say no. Finally, um, you'll want to tag the standards or components to which the data or changes apply. So you'll click this button and you can select different um, components to which the um, changes and continuous improvement efforts apply. Then you'll press the save button and then you can move forward. Section seven, um, this section relates to legacy transitions to CAPE. So this is only for EPPs who have an NCATE or TEAC legacy accreditation and are still in the process of moving towards CAPE accreditation. Otherwise, this section will not show for your EPP. This section just asks um, our legacy accredited providers to assess any gaps, if any, in their EPP's evidence relating to the CAPE standards and the progress made on addressing those gaps. Um, and this is just provides an opportunity for the EPPs to share an assessment of their evidence. If there are no gaps identified, you can simply select no identified gaps and proceed to question 7.2. However, if you do have gaps that have been identified, you can explain those in the text box below, as well as any steps planned or taken towards the gaps to be prepared for your next CAPE site visit. Um, in this section, again, you can also tag any um, components where you may be um, experiencing some gaps um, in ability to provide evidence for CAPE standards. Question 7.2 asks the EPP to certify to the best of their knowledge that the EPP continues to meet legacy NK standards or TEAC quality principles as applicable. So, you know, as a condition of keeping your legacy accreditation, you are in essence saying that the EPP is continuing to meet those legacy standards um, as applicable. And so hopefully you will be able to select yes. If no, you would need to select no and explain in section 7.3, um, any changes that mean your EPP does not currently meet those legacy standards. If you select yes in section 7.3, you can simply say not applicable. We're gonna press the next button and we are to our last section, section eight. Um, section eight allows you to provide feedback for CAPE and also to submit the report preparer's authorization. So section 8.1, which is optional, um, asks EPPs if they would like to provide any feedback in relationship to CAPE standards, CAPE sufficiency criteria, or the accreditation process in general. So first, um, if you can enter in the semester of your next accreditation visit. So that would be spring. And of course, you know, this will depend on what um, your particular EPP's accreditation visit is, but you'll type that into the box. And then in the next text box, which can be expanded, you can write any questions you have to CAPE about CAPE standards, CAPE sufficiency criteria, or the accreditation process in general, um, or just any feedback you have for CAPE in ways that they could improve. Finally, section 8.2 asks you to provide um, a preparer's authorization. This simply means that um, by checking the box below, um, you're indicating that you're authorized to complete the 2022 annual report and the details that you provided in the report and the linked web pages are up to date and accurate at the time of submission. So in order to do that, I will select the I'm authorized to complete this report and enter in the details that were asked below.
And I want to just verify again that I've typed in everything correctly so that um, if CAPE wants to reach out, they are able to reach me via email or phone and that there are not any errors. Finally, um, below, we're just acknowledging that I understand that all the information that is provided to CAPE from EPP seeking initial accreditation, continuing accreditation, or having completed the accreditation process is considered the property of CAPE and may be used for training, research, and data review. CAPE reserves the right to compile and issue data derived from accreditation documents, and there is a link to CAPE's accreditation policy if you'd like to know more. So I've acknowledged that. And then ultimately what you'll do once you get to this section is either you can save it, save and quit if you wanna come back and make any edits later, or you can submit the report. Once you have submitted the report, it will lock the AIM system. However, if you need to get back into AIMS to make any changes or adjustments, you can reach out to us at EPP annual report at capenet.org. Now I'm gonna turn it back to Bonhi to um, just close us out and discuss um, you know, some final matters in relation to the annual report, deadlines, and potential consequences for not completing the annual report. Thank you, Rosalyn. Um, I'm hoping providers will really find it very helpful uh, the way you ran through the steps uh, of completing and looking back and forth, looking at aims, and also following the instructions uh, on the template. So thank you. Before we close uh, this webinar, I would like to remind you that once again, uh, writing and submitting an annual report is a CAPE requirement uh, of compliance, uh, of continuing to meet accreditation standards. Unfortunately, there can be consequences if a report is not submitted uh, on time for this year. So the deadline once again is April 30th, 2022. Uh, sometimes things happen and their an EPP uh, might not be able to, maybe they forgot to click the submit button and it wasn't submitted or something. We always reach out to providers saying, oh, just so you know, your report was not submitted. Uh, so can you please go ahead and click the submit button? We see that you have started to work on it. But uh, sometimes there is no response. And in those cases, we really notify the provider of, um, we, we allow a 14 day grace period after the deadline and we notify the provider of non-compliance explaining the requirements and what the consequences could be. Uh, we send a letter to the provider defining the final time period for submission. Um, and then if we do not hear any response or no communication from the provider, uh, uh, or also um, no intention of submitting the annual report uh, indicated by the provider, then we have to refer this case, the EPP's case to, the, to a committee of the Accreditation Council, which is called the EPP Transparency Accountability and Improvement Committee for a potential adverse action or lapse of accreditation of that provider. This is usually done during the fall uh, accreditation council meeting in October because you know the deadline uh, in April is uh, past the accreditation council meeting in spring. So we have to allow for ample time period for CAPE to reach out to providers, give them the opportunity to respond just in case if there are any glitches or problems in the system or them needing some time uh, to respond. And so that, you know, we can wrap up and make sure the provider understands the requirement and then take this matter to the accreditation council for any uh, adverse action. But we really uh, want to make sure that it benefits the provider. The annual reporting is actually a process 
that benefits the provider and we want to make sure they understand uh, the steps. Finally, once the accreditation council has made a decision, we have to notify the provider um, of the recommended actions. And if there is a termination or lapse of accreditation, we'll send out a letter that indicates the date of action. Uh, remember that it's uh, important annual reporting as a process is not only for CAPE to know what is going on with the EPP, but also for the EPP to continue, continue to reflect on um, the improvement efforts because in educator preparation, we cannot stop thinking about making improvements, making changes based on the data that we are constantly collecting um, through our assessments, through our instruments that we have designed, right? And it's a neat way, the annual reporting uh, process is a very helpful way for, uh, for an EPP to think about, okay, in another five years, when we are up for review for accreditation, uh, what do we need to have in place? Do we have the communications, the people, the contact information, our status, the data that we are collecting to meet CAPE standards? Are they in order? Are we in the right direction? Or maybe we need some help. Let me ask, reach out to CAPE and ask for some help and guidance. So annual reporting gives providers that unique opportunity to connect with us. And as you know, we very carefully review these documents. We reach out to you, provide you feedback uh, on a rolling basis. We did this in 2021. We will do this again this year. We will review the reports as they come. Even if a, a report is submitted before the deadline, April 30th deadline, we will review it and provide you with the feedback. Earlier, the better that you can submit a report and we can send you the feedback. If there is nothing to be changed, looks good. We say, okay, you are in the right direction. Congratulations. So no response needed. If there are any suggestions for you, we note it down uh, very uh, clearly on the feedback report, the K feedback report to you, so that you know what changes to make and you have to inform us when the changes have been made. Uh, our email address, our generic email address for any queries related to annual reporting is EPP annual report at capenet.org. Please note that just because this is a generic email, we do not neglect it. Rose Helen and I, we monitor this account on a regular basis, on a daily basis. So if you send an email to this account, we will make sure you hear back from us on time. If you're having any technical difficulties regarding AIMS, Tech support, our IT team is the best uh, department to contact and they can be reached at tech support at capenet.org. Uh, Rosalind and I, we are the CAPE staff members who monitor the uh, annual reporting process. We address all queries. We hold Zoom uh, meetings to explain uh, and help understand uh, the process. So if you have any questions, either EPP annual report at capenet.org or uh, to Rosalind or me, just send us an email. Email is the best way to contact us uh, as we have been working remotely uh, most in most of the time. So you might find a full, uh, phone message box, um, voicemail mail box, but if you're sending an email, you will hear from us very soon, very promptly. So uh, that being said, uh, I would also like to give you the last slide would be some of the resources uh, that we have uh, on our website. So AIMS, you can access AIMS by just typing aims.capenet.org. Uh, for technical assistance, uh, reaching our IT team. This is the email address, tech support at capenet.org. Uh, our technical guide uh, has a link. It's up on our website. Um, and uh, you can reach out to us and we, we will post this on our website as well, this PowerPoint. And the CAPE accreditation policy, you can refer to the policy which is embedded in the template. 
uh, and also the workbook, which lays out the standards, expectations um, that, uh, that you might need to address for section four, uh, the accountability measures, right? The four accountability measures, uh, they're based on the CAPE standard, revised CAPE standards, and directions on those standards can be found on the 20, in the 2022 CAPE workbook. And uh, information on CAPE fees, completer number, by completer numbers, it's also on our website. Uh, there, these are all linked and we will post the, this PowerPoint uh, as well. And CAPE legacy standards, TIAC legacy quality principles, all this information uh, is available on this slide if you click the link. So Rosalind and I, we will make sure all this information is made available to you uh, through our website. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We are there to help you. And all the best for your 2022 annual reporting process.